Good Friday to you, I'm Brittany Klein-Peter. We now know the identity of the correctional officer accused of battery in Leon County. Correction Sergeant Derek Adams was arrested, stemming from a use of force incident inside the Leon County Jail on January 2nd. Leon County deputies say Adams tased an inmate in the chest while he was fully restrained in a chair. This after Adams says the inmate spit on both him and a nurse. Adams has worked with the Leon County Sheriff's Office since 2004. He has since been fired following the incident. Tallahassee police are searching for a man accused of a sexual assault near the campus of Florida A&M University. Police were dispatched to the 1400 block of Hudson Street shortly after 5 a.m. The suspect is described as a light-skinned black man with a thin build. TPD says the suspect left the scene and is yet to be captured. If you have any information, you're asked to call TPD at 850-606-5800. Also, in Tallahassee, police are investigating after a car crashes into a building this afternoon. The accident happened around 1 o'clock on Lake Bradford and Hernando Road. Police say there was also down power lines and are asking motorists to steer clear of the area. Now to an update on the closing of a longtime Tallahassee favorite. Hobbit American Grill has reopened its doors after state officials shut the business down due to several violations. The Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation reported more than 30 violations, including the presence of mold and roaches. The restaurant on Pensacola Street has been there for 38 years and says this is the first time it was ever shut down. Today is the deadline for applications for tourism grants in Wakulla County. The grants go to local individuals, businesses, and organizations providing up to $1,000 to be used to reimburse the groups for event marketing expenses. Wakala officials say it's a huge benefit to the county. In the past, the grants have been used for the Stone Crab Festival, the Blue Crab Festival, Rock the Dock tournaments, and more. From the WTXL Newsroom, I'm Brittany Kleinpeter. Have a great day. Taking a quick look at your traffic this morning, rain and a wintry mix are beginning to hit the Florida Panhandle this Christmas week, causing some stop and go action along I-10 southbound and northbound. The rush to leave work, pick up kids and do last minute shopping had thickened up traffic for a few hours between 2 and 4 p.m., but most roadways now seem to be clear. If you're traveling along Capitol Circle, look out for down power lines that crews have been working on since this morning. For all those heading out of town this weekend, be aware of more traffic on those roadways fleet with some room to spare. And for the most up-to-minute traffic updates, head on over to our website, WTXL.TV. Topping our national news tonight, President-elect Donald Trump will be sworn into office on Friday, January 20th. Washington, D.C. city officials are expecting between 800 and 900 people to flood into the city. Meanwhile, the president-elect continues to build his cabinet. Mitt Romney is publicly backing president-elect Donald Trump's choice for education secretary. Trump tapped Betsy Davis to lead the Department of Education back in November, causing backlash from the education community. The Michigan Republican is the head of the American Federation for Children. Trump is also announcing his plans to meet British Prime Minister Theresa May. He tweeted tonight that the meeting would take place in Washington sometime this spring. Trump also tweeted that he's looking forward to holding talks with May. His tweet also saying, quote, Britain, a longtime U.S. ally, is very special. Meanwhile, a second Senate committee is set to discuss the issue of Russian cyber hacking. The Senate Intelligence Committee will hold an open hearing. On Thursday, top U.S. intelligence officials told the Senate Armed Service Committee they're confident Russia used cyber attacks to try to influence the presidential election. Well, a female astronaut will soon join the ranks of record holders for NASA. Flight engineer Peggy Whitson is making the seventh spacewalk of her career this Friday morning outside of the International Space Station. That ties the record of NASA's Sunny Williams for the most spacewalks by a woman. Whitson is joined by Expedition 50 Commander Shane Cabrow, who is making two spacewalks today, the third and fourth of his career. From the WTXL Newsroom, I'm Brittany Klein-Peter. Have a great day.